And there's nothing indicating that he's playing Dragoonity. Like, this is ladder. I have no idea what I'm playing against half the time. Like, the decks are just bad. The players are bad. Whatever. What is up, everybody? It's your boy Herf here, back on the Dueling Entertainment channel. And today I got another installment of the How to Play series. And this time we're going to be looking at level duplication Thunder Dragons. Now, the deck has changed slightly uh, with the release of the new box, giving us uh, Ptolemy M7, as well as uh, Heliopolis. So I, am, I think I should probably start with the extra deck because it's probably the newest. Thunderwolf, rank 4. Any two level 4s. Uh, once per turn, you can detach one Xyz material, target itself, and an opponent's card. Destroy them both. Andreas will destroy any face-up card on the field. Force focus, you can negate one level 5 or higher. Must effect monster, so this is really good for going first against Noble Knights. This is an absolutely must-have card in the deck at the moment because Noble Knights and Desperado are just running rampant, so you need that negate. Uh, Constellar Ptolemy M7 is a new card from the latest box. Um, it's generic, two level sixes. You can disc you can uh, detach material to target one monster your opponent controls and return it to the hand. Uh, Heretic Sun Dragon Overlord of Heliopolis. Can't say that five times fast, but anyways, once per turn you can detach one excuse material from this card. And then tribute any number of monsters from your hand and or your side of the field. And then you can destroy an equal number of the cards on the field. So, what this reminds me of is a pre errated version of uh, Brionic. So, Brionic, a lot of people know from Duelings. Oops. It says you can discard any number of cards to your graveyard and then target the same amount of cards on the, your opponent controls and return them to the hand. Uh, initially, when it was released, it didn't target. So this, this reminds me a lot of Heliopolis. So basically, you just get to detach and then discard or like tribute from your hand or field and then just destroy everything. Like So your opponent has no idea... How many cards in your hand or field you're going to destroy, and they have no idea what you're going to select. So this, in and of itself, forces out so much disruption on your opponent's side of the field that is absolutely insane. Now Onomaru is really good because it allows you to synchro off your Chaos Drake and Levineer with your Raiden. It's awesome. It needs to be played at one, as well as your uh, Thunder Dragon Duo if it gets Fiendish Change or something. And your Vermilion Dragon mech is one of the best synchros in the game, so you must play it. So you synchro it with Raiden plus Dragon Dark. So that goes for the whole extra deck. It's not, I mean, it's somewhat expensive. We got three main deck or uh, main box ultra rares, but overall, it's not too bad. The, the main deck is where we really start to spend money. So you need three Levineer. This could be played at 2, but it's better played at 3, especially with a deck this size. And then some people play 3 Chaos Sorcerer. I only have 2, so I'm playing 2. Uh, I really don't think it's make or break if you have 3, just because like it's basically the same thing as a living. You're using the same situation. Sure, it's really good. You might want to play 3, but having 2 isn't the end of the world. Uh, Thunder Dragon Hawk. Uh, once per turn, you can discard this this card from your hand to the graveyard to special summon a Thunder Dragon from your graveyard or banish pile back to your side of the field. So it's important to note that this effect does not target. I had a couple times where I, I activated this, my opponent disrupted something on my field, and then I just got to summon whatever they got rid of. So it doesn't target. A lot of people have no idea how this card works. And the second effect is if it's Sent from the field to the graveyard or banished, you can uh, shuffle. It's basically a magical mallet, uh, but you really only use the first effect. And you can only activate once, e either effect once per turn, so you really don't want to ever use the second effect. Uh, Thunder Dragon Dark, we play three of this card. 
because we want to be able to manually put it into the graveyard, because we're playing Levineer, Chaos Sorcerer, and Duo, all like to banish lights and darks from the graveyard. So this guy, when he's banished, you actually get to search a Thunder Dragon card from your deck to your hand. So that's really, really good. And it's important to note that you can't activate the search effect the same turn that you discard. So that's why you always want to discard it in your opponent's turn. Duo, you search it. And then you just it's just a big body you special summon by using a light and dark. When it destroys a monster, you get to banish a card from your graveyard to add any Thunder Dragon from your deck to your hand. And in the end phase of your opponent's turn, you get to uh, put one card from your banished pile either to the top of the deck or bottom of your deck. So you can recycle something like if you side deck a DD Crow, you could just DD Crow them every turn, which is really powerful. Um, but this is an OTK deck that doesn't come up too often. However, I have recycled the Treacherous Trap Hole multiple times with this card. Uh, Dragon Roar, you discard it from your hand to the grave uh, to either add back a uh, Thunder Dragon in your deck or in your grave or banish pile, as well as if it's sent from the field to the grave or banished, you get to special summon the Thunder Dragon from your deck to your side of the field in defense. So this card is really good at going first if you're unable to set up Force Focus because it's just able to float, which is super, super nice. So Thunder Dragon, a lot of people may not know why this is in here. Um, first of all, it's good because it's another Lupine target that does something productive, as well as you just get to put it in the graveyard for Light Fodder. So that's nice because we, we play so many like Chaos cards that having a way to just manually put a light in the grave is really powerful. And then Raiden is searchable off of charge. Basically, both Raiden and the charge, just their sole purpose is to mill cards for our banishing. Really good there. Aloof Lupine, when this card is normal summon, you get to banish a card from your hand, or banish a monster from your hand, and then from your deck with the same type as that monster. And then if it's destroyed by battle, or if it's uh, sort of by battle or card effect, you can target one of your banished monsters and add it to your hand. So it's both your obvious, it's your best starter, like hands down, as well as it's really good recovery if your opponent figures out a way to break your board. So that's really nice. And then Melody of Awakening Dragon, the final card. You get to discard a card from your hand to the graveyard to search two Chaos Dragon Living Ears from your deck to your hand. So any card with any dragon type with 3,000 or more attack. And 2,500 or less defense. So, Chaos Dragon Levineer. Near. And then level duplication, because this is actually a really broken skill. Because your opponent can't respond to it. So, they can't actually disrupt it if you summon a monster and then level dupe a different monster. They can't respond to the level duplication, so then you just get to Xyz. So, that's really, really good. As well as it allows you to go into Onomaru very easily. It allows you to go into any of your Xyz. Because before, the Thunder Dragons primarily relied on using tuners to go into good extra deck monsters to OTK your opponent. Well, now we don't even need tuners because we have Xyz that are like actually viable for the deck. So, Also, it's worth noting that Direwolf is good. However, I have very... I've been heavily considering putting Gaia in there because there are so many valid targets for it to rank up into. Which is, so if you can exceed some of this card by using a rank 5 or 6 monster control as the exceeds material, and then everything gets transferred to this card and does piercing. So that's pretty good if you ask me. So, but Dire Wolf does come up an okay amount of times. Like this, like it's not dead ever, really. But this card is just so good to be able to, if you get Fiendish Change or something, just be able to rank up into it and then not have a dead body. But either or is fine. Like, the, the deck is awesome either way. So now, I'll show you guys some replays now that I have... Oh, wait, not friends. Favorite replays. So I do show a lot of the combos that I, that I maybe have not talked about yet, but they're in the duel, don't worry. All right, so this is me going against Blue Eyes. So I'm going second. Uh, this deck really loves to go second. It's a very OTK based deck, and it's just fantastic doing so. So this hand is a brick going first. 
We're going second, we draw into nothing. And then we finally draw into a Dragon Dark. So we're just going to discard this to add a card. And then we're just going to special summon it. Because if anything happens to this Dark, we get a search. And we don't really have any other plays, really. So he's just going to pass turn. We're going to drop a Thunder Dragon and the Dragon Dark. We should have done the Dark in the turn before. That was a misplay. Because now I can't search off of it. However, he's going to die here anyways. So it's important that you only add one Thunder Dragon every time so you can do it again later so you can put another Light. Otherwise you get stuck with two Garnets in your hand. So we're going to banish everything to summon Living Ear. Now level duplication our Dragon Dark with the other Living Ear in our hand so we can go into Heliopolis. Now it's important that we go into Heliopolis and not into anything else or like the Adrius in our deck because Heliopolis doesn't target. And Maiden actually activates off us targeting, which is very not good. So we put in all the stuff to summon our Thunder Dragon duo, and that's game. So we kind of bricked in that game, but it just shows you that one card can really open up. Really open. I can't remember which one I showed you guys. Uh, I showed it. Was it this one? It was not this one. Okay, perfect. So I'm going second again. Remember I said like the best going first turn is, well, if you know your opponent is playing something like Noble Knights or just like something random, you always want to make a force focus going first. If you know that they are summoning rank five or level five or hires, otherwise it's worth just ending on Lupine plus Roar on the field because Roar will float. So that's worth noting. So he's just going to do his whole, like, Desperado thing. It's really lame. Whatever. So the reason that this deck has such a good Desperado matchup is we just get to bait them as Judge Negate for no cost, really. We get to, like, discard that, but it doesn't really matter. So now we're going to... So this is the optimal, like, opener. Lupine plus either Thunder Dragon Dark or Roar, because you just get to banish the other one from the deck. So now you're going to roar into another roar, and you're going to dark search a uh, Thunder Dragon Hawk. But if you already have a Hawk like I did, you should search the duo. So basically, normal summon Lupine, banish roar and dark, summon roar, search Hawk. If you already have a Hawk, search a duo. So now we get to Hawk effect. So he's actually going to pop the Lupine here, which doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, but whatever. He should have popped the other roar. And now we just get to, uh, we get to add back to the hand off of, uh, Lupine's effect. I just wanted to have that just to be able to discard next turn if I needed it. So now we're going to Ptolemy. Now Ptolemy is really nice because we're about to bounce. So since I threatened, well, essentially I'm threatening lethal here. He's just going to Karma Cut me. Which is fine. So now I'm just going to drop my duo swing. And now because I destroyed a monster by battle, I get to search my hawk. So if anything happens to duo, uh, I just I can just uh, get it back. Now it's worth noting that since duo said says it must first be special summoned by your hand. If this card ends up in your graveyard off of the effect of Raiden or Charge, you can't summon it with Hawk. You can only summon it off of Hawk if it was properly summoned first. So that's worth noting there. So I'm going to darken his turn. He's going to end up uh, missing on the duo effect. So now since it is the end phase, I get to add the Ptolemy back. So I'm going to normal summon Raiden. So he's going to bad aim. So right there, he tried to bad aim my duo. But since he uh, since he popped my duo and the hawk doesn't target, I just get to resummon this. Now, if he didn't have a bad aim there, I was going to uh, special summon my dark. Yeah, special summon my dark and then pop. And then that way I would have had ways to get through... What's about to happen here? 
So I banish a dark because dark will get to search and then duo will get to search. So that's all very good. So now he's going to whiff, which is unfortunate for him, but ultimately we're just going to clap this guy. And he knows that, so he gets on out of there. So really, as you guys can see, like if you get any of your combo, you just automatically win. But the biggest problem that this deck has, and the reason that it's like getting held back so much, is either going first or not drawing into combo. Like those are the only two things that hold this deck back at all. So I'm going to go first. I haven't gone first yet, so this will be a good way to show you guys how to go first with this deck. So now I do end up milling a dark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to special summon the dark and pass. So if anything happens to this dark, if it's sent from the uh, field to the grave or banished, I get to search. So that's really good. So he's playing heroes. So since I use the dark effect here, I actually can't search off of this dark on the field if anything happens, which is technically a misplay. You shouldn't do that because the, this dark effect won't go off then. But they're good duels because I wasn't playing perfectly as well as the like long and interactive. So I get to show you guys, talk you guys through what you should do or should not do with the deck. I was doing this at like 2 a.m. while I'm laying in my bed. Using a mass change, special summon the Anki. So ultimately, if we had not used the dark effect, we probably would have searched like a hawk. But now we're going to be able to search off of the effect with Chaos Sorcerer. So ultimately, it didn't really matter. So we're going to uh, get a search by summoning Duo. So now this is very interesting. So we're going to put Chaos Sorcerer on the field. So the reason that you love to play rank 6 XCs obviously is because of the Lupine combo. But Chaos Sorcerer says after the turn it's activated its effect, it can't attack anymore. However, you can just exceed some in something else. So we're going to banish that. We're going to Ptolemy. We're going to bounce. We're going to swing for a game. He doesn't have any disruption. So we win. Let's go. Too easy. All right, we're playing against Leo. So this is a duel where I end up going first, and I don't know what I'm playing against. So, obviously, because it's on ladder. But if I knew what I was playing against, I would... So, I'm playing against Dragoonity, obviously. So, I didn't tell you guys that. But if I know what I'm playing against, I'm going to summon Lupine and make a Force Focus with that same combo I talked about earlier. Now, I don't know what I'm playing against, so I just end on Lupine plus Roar, which is still very good because Roar will be able to float. And there's nothing indicating that he's playing Dragoonity. Like, this is ladder. I have no idea what I'm playing against half the time. Like, the decks are just bad. The players are bad. Whatever. So, I end up getting here. So, he, when he put down that Senatus, I was pretty monka s because I didn't really... I didn't really expect him to be playing that. And I kind of wish I would have made a Force Focus just randomly. However, it's it's fine. Because he does end up killing me. So he's going to just do his full Dragoonity combo. He's going to end up Ascalon. Both of my monsters. Roar gets to special summon a Dark. Because something happened to the Dark, I get to search another Roar. So now, I'm going to charge the Light Brigade and get my Raid in. Now I just get to pop off, basically. Is what's about to happen. So, I'm going to Levianir. So the reason I wanted to put this dark on the board is because I have the Raiden in my hand. And so I can make a Vermilion and get a search at the same time. So well, I guess I'm going to search off of that first. So I get the duo. And then I get to pop. Which is super good. So he makes the bulge here. But I'm going to normal summon Raiden. I make a Vermilion. I pop the bulge. I actually pop the back row first. Now I normal I special summon my duo, and now I'm gonna make Heliopolis. Which the interesting thing is, is because I made Heliopolis, and then I detached my duo. 
duo, you can summon more than once per turn, by the way. So because I put him back in the graveyard, I can use the Dragon Roar from my hand to add the duo back and then special summon it again. So just super great follow-up. Amazing. And then that's lethal because this deck, best deck. But yeah, I mean, this deck definitely takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you get used to it, and you can draw a combo consistently, because, I mean, that's really the only problem I've had with this deck is just not drawing. And when you don't draw, you can't play, which feels mega bad. Alright, so we're going second. And so in his end phase, I'm going to discard dark to add another dark just to thin out the deck. And so I can do my full combo next turn. So basically, we just have... Okay. Even before we drew this, we had a perfect hand. Now, because we drew charge, this hand just got really stupid. So we're going to Lupine. And I think you guys know what I'm going to do off of this. So I, I, do, I do Dark. I do Roar. And then so I summon the Roar. I add the Duo because I already have the Hawk. Now I'm going to Hawk Effect, Special Summon the other Roar, we make the Ptolemy, we bounce his monster, and then we just summon our duo, and we swing for a game. Like, deck is absolutely insane. We didn't even have to use our charge or do any of that. This deck is just insane off of its own merit. Like, absolutely insane. So you see all these. I'm not sure exactly where the replays end and where they begin but ultimately that's the deck level duplication you don't activate it every single duel it's not something that always comes up but when it does come up it often wins you the game just because of its ability to give you like plays where you normally wouldn't and that's why like level duplication is probably one of the skills that's going to get nerfed very soon um just because i mean well here's the thing it's not broken right now but more and more situations are going to pop up where decks just have really broken extra deck options when they sh really shouldn't. You know what I'm saying? Partially, the reason this skill has lasted so long and the reason that it hasn't been nerfed is because not many decks can exploit this generic uh, extra deck because most, most decks either have an extra deck that they need to run or have or don't really have like the option to play a good extra deck monster but with but thunder dragons can easily make sixes and eights which both got amazing support so that's why this skill is so important now because really any combination of monsters could be a six or an eight as long as you have one or the other right so if you have a living ear in your hand and a monster on the field you can make you can Levianir and then make Heliopolis, just cuz. Right? Like that's just some like because you have the two. Which is really broken. Because like I said before, you would have to wait for your glow up bulb or you would have to pray to mill the glow up bulb, stuff like that. Now you just you, you know you get your Heliopolis whenever you want. You get your Ptolemy whenever you want. You get all of these cards just generically, which is something that this game hasn't really seen yet. And uh, so it'll be very interesting to see how this deck does in the future. If other decks choose to abuse this generic extra deck, let me know what you guys think of it in the comments below. Is level duplication overpowered? Do you guys think this deck is fun? Stuff like that. Anyways, thank you so much for checking out the channel. Make sure you comment. Make sure you like. Make sure you hit those notification bells. Get in the Twitch because we have new player help there. That's for free. You don't have to pay us. If we like it. But you don't have to, okay? We, we, we service the community free of charge. As well as, make sure you check out the Twitch because uh, that's where we stream free entry tournaments practically every single day. Uh, it's really great to see how the meta develops, all that kind of stuff. And the way you join those tournaments is also through the Discord, so you have to get in there anyways. So why not get some help if you need it? But anyways, I'm going to head out of here, guys. So I'll see you guys later. Thanks for stopping by the channel. Remember, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. You know what? Thank you, and see ya.